Last week, I attended the Production Music Conference, which is a gathering of composers and publishers who all work in the production music business. The same people come back year after year, and I've got to know quite a few of them, and I had no plans to make a video, but after spending time with some of these composers, I realized there's a common thread that runs through all of us who are crazy enough to write a thousand or two thousand tracks and just see what happens. Do not move. Do not move. How are you doing, Philip? Good, how are you doing? You feel okay being in a John Meyer music video? Of course. Who wouldn't have uh, a music one? video? Oh. oh. Yeah, I'm going to be singing over this. <laughs> Is it a fast song or a slow song? See you. Carter, why are you here? To hang out with you. This was the biggest conference yet. Plenty of panels discussing all topics related to production music. Lots of AI discussions. I know. I enjoy the panels, but it's really about the people that I meet and catch up with year after year after year. I recognize so many faces. However, I did meet a new face this year. His name was Yelly Dittmar, and he had just won a Mark Award, which is kind of like the Grammys, I guess, for the Production Music Association. My name is Jelle Dittmar, and I'm a composer from the Netherlands, uh, located in Emmeloord, which is a small town that no one here ever heard of. The track that we submitted was basically made with 80% uh, of live instruments, and my father made an instrument, uh, basically it's called the Apprehension Engine, Mark Corvin, the composer for The Lighthouse and The Witch. He basically commissioned the uh, instrument to be built. You were able to make a tension cue awesome with something that was that you know personally everything about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. Yeah. I had a panel here at the PMC uh, regarding AI. AI is so fast, uh, we will never be able to catch up to that in, in, in terms of writing speed. But we can compete on it on a quality level. I just try to combine real instruments with virtual instruments. And I think that really shines through the entire music and the tracks that I do, basically. Brendan. <laughs> hey, John. How's it going? Brendan, where'd you come from? Boston. Why do I see you every year? <laughs> it's a good time to hang out. I love this place. I love the community here. It's it's a great, that's how I met you. Um, I meet all the people that I work with, yeah. It, this is the place where all of the, the same type of weirdos are together. That is <laughs> it's, definitely it's, true. Yeah, it's a good community, yeah. <laughs> I'll speak to the weirdos comment in a minute, but first my friend Chris Jones. I always think I'm good at sound bites, and then I get, you know, and I do interviews, and I'm like, wait, what now? You know? Chris Jones. Yeah. Why are you hey. here? Uh, I'm here to nurture my relationships with uh, my catalog holders. I'm here to have a little bit of a vacation in LA because I'm from New York and it's the exact opposite of this place in every way. Uh, you're one of those people that I'm glad to see. And, um, you know, I'm showing up and proving I'm alive to everybody. <laughs> How long have you been in this business? Uh, I got my start in 1999 wow. working for a video helper. Uh, I was their senior producer from 19, uh, 2000 to 2008, um, and uh, they are like family to me, and um, seriously, there isn't a day that doesn't go by that I don't express gratitude for calling them. It takes a little something different to yeah. do this type of work. I think it's really important to develop a style in this business. I see a lot of guys creating things that sound exactly like something else, something they heard on television and immediately thinking it has value. Uh, but I made a decision long ago that if I wasn't making music that I wanted to hear, I'm in it for the wrong reasons and I had, I had to start there. I generally don't overwork things. I come from an improvisational avant-garde background, so I commit to things pretty quickly. I'm sort of a volume guy too. It's like, you know, I, I, I take more cues from like visual art. I create something, it's abstract, I know how to organize it, and if that isn't satisfying, I go make another one. And do that every day. You killed it. That's, That's terrible. No, no, no. That's I, terrible I, advice. I was listening. Wave. Oh. Wave to us. There's two the guys great, in there that look just like us. The great Chris Jones. Oh, thank you so much. This is Cal E. Fornia. Luke! Here, take Callie. What's that? Bar? You just asked for ice cream. I'm just trying it. Uh huh. I don't like it. So what are you gonna do with it now? Throw it away. Throw it away? You have it. You just took a bite out of it. Do that. Crazy. I love you. You're so weird. State your name. Jonathan Still. How many tracks have you written, Jonathan? 
Uh, just short of 2,000. 2,000 track. That's a lot. It's, it's, it's quite a bit. How many years in this business? Uh, 18. Well, 19. When I first got into it, it was uh, someone likened it to real estate. And the more real estate you own, the more space you own, the more money you make. And that's pretty much exactly what this is. So when you start out, you think you're going to make a lot of money early. It's just not the way that's going to go. If you start saying, well, I have a day to start and write a track and produce a track, um, you know, you don't get that added benefit of just having one more day to hear it and maybe make nice tweaks and changes. I have actually started scaling back the number I do per year just to make sure the quality is above what it possibly was 10 years ago or whatever. Because that's going to be really what's going to end up winning out. The quality is going to win out. 2000 I thought I have a lot and I have like 900 and something. I love this conference. It's expensive. It's in the thousands when it's all said and done, when it comes to hotel rooms, admission to the conference, travel to and from the conference. A lot of people live in LA, but I certainly don't. Nothing's cheap anymore, but LA is certainly not cheap. And I hate that that excludes certain people. It also shows a bit of a commitment for those who are there, because I know what everybody who showed up had to do to get to LA. Awesome, come here, come here, come here. In the light, right here. You are from? I'm from Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee. Yep. How many PMCs have you been to? Three. Best part about it? The people, man. Why do you keep coming back every year? The people. What's it's where your... all the publishers, the composers get together. I also know what every composer has to do to be in this business. You know, Jonathan talked about his 2,000 tracks. You don't just sit down and decide, oh, I want to make a lot of money in the production music business and I'm going to write 2,000 tracks and it's going to be awesome. You don't make any money for a long time, especially if most of the deals that you take are percentage back in. It was three or four years before I made anything, and I remember one day just laughing to myself when I got a statement that was nothing, thinking, if I ever make any money at all in this business, I'm going to be able to speak with authority to people and say, look, this is how it works. Now, talking about AI, are we in trouble? Absolutely. Everybody on the planet is in trouble. But think about this for a second. I don't know if this gets discussed enough. I certainly don't hear it much. But when you're writing music, if you've written a lot of music, you know when you're writing something, and maybe it is asked for and is useful, but you know when you're writing something and you're using the tools that are readily available, even if you're not just ripping stuff off or pressing one key and having all kinds of sounds happen, you know when you're playing something that a simple computer program or algorithm could replicate easy. Am I right? But you also know when you're working on something that is a bit more personal, it's a bit more nuanced, uh, it involves real instruments and such. And I'm not so naive that I think, oh, guitars won't ever be copied by AI. Of course they will. They'll figure it out. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are now AI companies that exist to find AI-generated music. You can't copyright something that is AI generated. So if you can't copyright it, you can't own it. And therefore it's really difficult to monetize that. I'm not ready to jump ship on this business. There's a lot to work out, but here's what I know. It takes a special, as my friend Brendan said, you know, a bunch of weirdos. It takes a mindset. For me, the two things that I've spent the most time in the past 15 years are production music, uh, tracks, and YouTube videos. And both of those require a ridiculous amount of time and effort. And you just kind of hope that eventually something will work out. And I've been fortunate enough that both of those things have worked out enough for me to keep wanting to do it. But what makes both of those endeavors special is that I have met people along the way who have done what I have done. They've put in that effort and we understand what the other has gone through in order to get where they are. And through the process, you learn more about the business and a lot of people pivot along the way because new opportunities happen, because other people give them opportunities, because they know what was required for that person to get where they are. And I know that there's a shared respect between all of us that if we all have to pivot and we have to do something else, well, a lot of the people I met along the way in this weird business are the ones that I want to help figure out what the next thing is. There's no good way to talk about this AI stuff. You're either doom and gloom or you are the eternal optimist who's clueless. But all I know is that when I come home from that conference every year, I am always so energized and my heart is full.
Oh, and if you want to know more about the Production Music Conference, go follow my friend Nino on Instagram. She did such a great job capturing videos of all the people, most of which I didn't meet because there were so many. She also at one point told me, John, your energy is bad right now. She was nicer than that, the way she said it. And she suggested that I go outside and take in the sun and refresh. And she was right, I did. And I got my energy back. Thanks, Nino. Talk soon. Thank you, PMC. Bene, siamo al giorno numero 3 di PMC. Un saluto a tutti gli amici della PMC. PMC has been amazing. PMC, gracias por todo. John Meyer. And I am ready to get on a plane and go home and see my kids and family. However, I'm glad that I met people and reconnected with the likes of Nino.